minutes remaining. Mr. Chairman, I, I urge the passage of this legislation. I'd like the Americans to understand that the issue of whether we should drill or not is long overdue because I've heard this argument for 36 years because I was here when we drilled and opened the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline to provide 17 billion barrels of oil to America. 17 billion barrels of oil. And I've heard people say that there's only 2 percent. That is a figure that was arrived at in 1955. We have new estimates with new technology. We think we have about 20 percent of the world's reserves in fossil fuels. And we're not producing them. I've heard the argument this wouldn't change the price of gasoline. It's not quick enough. I've heard that 25 years ago. We need to produce so we have a stable supply of domestic fossil fuels so other countries and speculators don't take advantage. They have us right now in a position they can take advantage because we are not producing any oil, any consequence in the United States right now. We're down to 600,000 barrels a day in Alaska. If we drop much more, we won't even have that 600,000 barrels a day. Yet we have in Alaska, in the Chukchi Sea, five, take that back, there's been five billion dollars spent to find oil and we have not had to permit to drill because of this administration. They think there's 27 billion barrels of oil in one offshore development. The other one has approximately 14 billion barrels of oil and one offshore development. And of course, we have Anwar, which that side does not support to a great degree, that has probably 39 billion barrels of oil. You add up that amount of oil, you have oil that lasts this country for 100 years. Now, yes, we ought to have other uh, forms of energy, but the Obama administration is trying to force this country into a green energy future. This is a policy. I heard the former speaker say it. Of course, it doesn't make any sense. It makes sense to reduce our dependency on oil, as I said before, but no one takes in consideration the impact upon the economy of this nation. New Jersey is building an LNG plant to receive gas from overseas. That's well and good, buying foreign gas. Well, we have trillions of feet of gas in the United States of America. We are costing not only jobs, but the dependency. And everybody talks about the high price of gasoline. It's caused primarily because of spiking. Some little incident in the Middle East, the OPEC countries, that supposedly have 70 percent of our oil, raises that price of gasoline. You can't have a model of economy and a business and have those spikes. If the price was $5 across the board, if we knew it was going to be $5 across the board in 40 years, you could build your economy on that. But we have gas at $5 a gallon now, the 1st of June, and it may go, whoop, to $6 in August. It may be down a little bit. We need to stabilize, and only we can do this. But this administration is trying to convert America into their green technology. Technology of wind. Technology of, of uh, uh, let's say solar. Wind power is 17 percent, 17 cents a kilowatt compared to five cents for coal. Now, Mr. and Mrs. America, you're paying for that. And again, as I said in one of my statements, was that this, in fact, is a tax on the American people. This is an Obama tax because of the lack of the cheaper fuel that's necessary to keep our economy running. The impediments of oil and gas production is another reason. We'll slow down a federal lease. We talk about everything as leased and permitting offshore and onshore. Only six permits have been issued since the Gulf of Mexico in the time the, the BP spill happened. Six permits. Leasing in the Gulf of Mexico Atlantic coast has been delayed for several years. Offshore permitting has oil and gas has been slowed down to a real slow crawl. America, I keep telling you, you are being taxed by an administration that does not understand the, the necessity for fossil fuels for our economy. The movement of product, the receiving of product, and the shipping of product, the deliverance of people, the deliverance of supplies by air, ship, train, plane, and automobile, and truck. That's what makes this country great. 
And here we sit with a group that says, oh, we're going to save the environment. I'm all for that. But you don't have an energy policy and you can't have it without fossil fuels. Anybody who says we're going to have one without fossil fuels is not even thinking about fuels, not even thinking about energy. You can't wind power. We might get a little wind power if we put a propeller on the top of this capital, collect all the hot air that comes out of here most of the time. That might work. But we're not going to do it with solar power. You need all the forms of energy, and this administration so far has not promoted anything but the two most expensive, wind and solar. We need our fossil fuels. We need to make sure the agencies under this administration make sure that we develop our energies or we cannot go anywhere. And if they can't do it, then it's up to this Congress. This Congress, this bill, this legislation, the two previous bills are a step forward, a necessary step for this nation. We need to keep going to employ Americans and quit buying foreign oil. You talk about being hooked on dope. That's what we are. We are hooked on foreign oil. And yet we have people that say we can't develop our own oil. We can't develop our own resources. It will hurt somebody. Somebody will be harmed and we can't do it. That's not true. We can do it. In the Gulf, there was 41,000 wells drilled without a spill. And they had one spill, and everybody thinks the world came to end. It was bad, yes. Do we learn from it? Yes, as we did in Exxon Valdez. We learned from that, and we will improve upon that. But the not to let them drill, not to let them produce that oil, not let them help America out, not employ Americans, that is dead wrong. So I urge my colleagues to pass this legislation, reject the amendments that are going to be offered. They are not the amendments they should be. At this time, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman from Alaska.